Super 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 BS Presents I'm Brian. Nice talking to you guys. I'm super stoked that you guys agreed to do this. This is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, it's been a crazy, yeah. crazy few days. <laughs> crazy week, actually. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Whenever you get on Kotaku, like one of the most read blogs ever, it's bound to be insane. Yeah. Um, if it's cool with you guys, I'm going to jump right to it. Is that yeah. nice? Uh, real yeah. quick, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind saying your names. Uh, so I'm Jimmy, uh, the designer of uh, Wild Heart. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and? I'm uh, Sam, one of the programmers there. Oh, cool. Rad, and I'm Brian. Um, <laughs> you guys know who I am. <laughs> um, have you guys ever worked on any video games in the past? Um, so we're both at university in Falmouth doing like a digital games course. So oh. like basically what you do on the course is like uh, you all get in little like groups of 12 and then you just sort of like make games throughout the years and then you get marked on those games. And like Wild Heart is, is one of the games that we work together on, basically. So you guys finished that in a just a school semester or or a year or what? Yeah, the um, we the uh, as the first year of the course, you um, you your main project is a lot smaller over the space of just one semester. Um, but this because this is one we made in second year, we had from the start of the year till from September till April, May to get it done a month. You guys finished that whole thing in just, what would that be, nine months? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, did, we did do a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. Have Did you guys ever work in Unity before? Um, I, I, I hadn't. I, like, just from the start of the course is when I started using it. And I don't know about Sam. Yeah, no, I, th I think for most of us on the team, the two years that we've been there is most of our experience in the engine. Oh, okay. So you just started Unity doing this, and then you pretty much in nine months like bang this game out. Yeah, I think so. yeah. Th That's... There were some <laughs> there were some disasters in the first year. Like to, we learned we learned some things from those. I assume those aren't on itch or whatever. You can't find no. them. <laughs> they're, hidden, they're hidden away in like the dark depths of the internet somewhere. <laughs> I totally understand, man. That's yeah. I don't know. You're always learning, but still, I mean, this is an awesome like kind of almost close to first effort since you guys are still in school. I've only played about uh, 30 minutes myself. I think I just got a second party member, like a, I want to say, I have a fox and I, do you get a wolf next or a badger? I, I, I've I got him. He's running around yeah. next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the badger is the second one you pick up. Yeah, I thought so because I got to the totem pole and I was just about to play more and then I got the email. Hey, let's, uh, let's chat. Well, anyways, I, could you guys tell the people who are listening a little bit about Wild Heart? We didn't sort of like come up with the idea of Wild Heart initially. Like, um, basically, we were in a team of about nine, and half the team was split one way, and half the team was split the other way with what game to go with for our game this year. So, like, half wanted this like big open um, puzzle, like puzzle game where you use like elements to get through the level, and the other half wanted uh, like a tactics ship game, yeah, like a, a ship game, naval ba combat game, and then like basically the design team and the art team couldn't agree. So we sort of mashed them together and then had the tactics game with the nature setting. And then that's sort of how Wild Heart came to be. That's like excellent. I, I really, really love the aesthetic to it. It's really cool. Did, who Was the artist part of your team as well? Or did you guys have to outsource for that person? Yeah, we, um, because like the way the course is set up, we, um, when they, we get to pick and choose a little bit, um, but we're mainly put into teams and separated into groups that, for the most part, are covered by our roles. So we all have a couple artists, a couple programmers, and they try to fill out. So you have as many different skills across your team as possible. Oh, so that's really, really cool. So is this like a video game school that you guys are going to, or is this a like a video game course in a like a UK university? Yeah, is, um, yeah. <laughs> it's just a um, <laughs> the the digital games course at uh, Falmouth University in Cornwall. South England, Southwest. Okay, yeah. Okay, so actually, I should have asked that at the beginning. <laughs> from, uh, uh, we're all from the UK here, and I'm from California. Um, yeah, this is this is really cool. How so? Your team is twelve people. 
I think it's um, it's nine, and then we lost um, an audio person about halfway because, like, student financing reasons made oh, him leave man. our team, which is kind of sucky. So the the music's like a mix of stuff he did and stuff we got online, royalty free stuff. Yeah, some it's really really great. Like, I love that trailer song. Did you guys did you guys make that? Was that something you just found? Like. Uh, I'm afraid we didn't make that, no. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I also like the, the title screen song. Did you guys make that? We did actually make that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's, it's bound to happen. Like, there's, you know, you have a lot of people going on, especially, I mean, we did, uh, I do a little bit of programming myself, and in my class where we made a game, there were, like, three of us, and we could barely do, like, a text RPG in, like, a couple months. So, I, I mean, this is super incredible work. So... <laughs> I'm uh I'm really really impressed. What inspired you guys to make like this game though? Like what what like are either of you guys big fans of tactical games or, or what inspired you guys to do it? At the time, I, I was pushing for a tactics game quite hard because I, I was playing Fire Emblem at the time. So which Fire Emblem? I, uh, Awakening. Okay, cool. What, so I, yeah, I, I wanted to do a tactics game. <laughs> what about you, Sam? What's your uh, did you were you big on the tactics or were you okay if it was a puzzle game or a tactics game? I was um. As Jimmy said before, we, um, our other one was the like kind of open island uh, light puzzle, and I think I was I was leaning towards that because I've been working more on the prototype for that game than um, the tactics naval battle, okay. and I wasn't I didn't mind I don't think I I was happy to work with either as long as we could come to all come to a conclusion and actually start working on a main project. Yeah, I mean, it's it came together really, really well. So I'm glad you guys did switch this. And, you know, I mean, we'll we'll get to more about that later. But I think the aesthetic and the tactics idea was really, really, really smart because you guys might have gotten lost in a wave of puzzle games if you would have had that approach. But I don't know what, what your, your end game was anyways. It, it was kind of nice because, um, like... With, like without throwing the university lecture under the bus he he didn't really like one of them didn't really like wild heart when we pitched it to them and yeah. the pitch was the sort of disaster so yeah. it's it's kind of nice how well it's turned out after sort of being told it wasn't it wasn't the right idea <laughs> yeah i mean it's it really is a cool like game and idea that's i'm i am sure that's half of your guys's attention was just because people love tactics games and people love this really cool minimal art style i mean you're your artist did some incredible work. Yeah, that ace. <laughs> what games inspired Wild Heart? I know you mentioned Fire Emblem. Have you guys played other tactical games that you guys really like? <laughs> I think um, it's not quite in the same realm, but we did very briefly look at the old Super Mario RPG. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> when we first, when we were first trying to put the combination of ideas together we did briefly look at that as a way of moving through an overworld and having these battles pop up um we just have to limit it so that they weren't as random we could make these encounters and have a couple per level but that was the kind of style that we wanted to aim for i think i mean that's oh. one, one of the best games man you're shooting for the stars <laughs> right there i like hearing that what about you jimmy um I mean, just sort of expanding on that, at, like at one point um, we had it so like the whole world was a grid and then you'd like move your animal. You're going to have like just moving on a grid throughout the entire game. And then we cut that down to just having grids in the battles. And I think that worked quite well. But um, other inspirations, I mean, for me, it was just Fire Emblem at the time. <laughs> it was just like an impulsive pick, really. <laughs> Did you guys ever play Final Fantasy Tactics on PlayStation 1? I know of it, but I haven't played it. Okay, I just was wondering if that was a big inspiration because it, it. I mean, it's very. I mean, it's like it's not obviously the first, but I would say almost like a godfather of the the popular tactical RPG genre. And that's what I. I, I got to play a little bit of this, but I, I didn't notice many RPG elements. Do they exist within the game? I think we were when we first started playing out. We were going to try and introduce a very basic level system, mm -hmm. uh, but as we over the first like couple of months, we realized this was project was going to be way too big, and we weren't going to be able to fit that in in time, or and, it would be not. Right. And we like we quickly realized that balancing stuff with like increasing levels is a hell of a task, and yeah. we, with six months, it's not really feasible. No, it's it's totally understandable. I mean, what you guys did in six months, I I'm still amazed. So that I mean, that's totally time wise limiting. And you're right, balancing RPG mechanics are. Oh, so difficult. 
But uh, I, I was just curious because I, I saw that they had health meters and such. So I just wasn't sure if there was a point where they get stronger or how that how that works. Um, since I didn't get a chance to beat it, how many levels or stages or worlds are there in um, Wild Heart? Um, there's th there's three three like big maps for you to explore, mm -hmm. and I think there's nine creatures. So like the progression is just through picking up those creatures, basically. Yeah, I love the little trailer of <laughs> them all <laughs> running around on the map, and it's just it's awesome. Who who made your trailer? Uh, I did actually. <laughs> you did? It didn't like yeah. Adobe Premiere or uh, in this thing called DaVinci Resolve. I think it's I haven't seen it around very much, but I got it because it's free, basically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you just save the video from the game and then just edit it and splice it together? That, yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, wow, man. That probably took quite a bit of work. It, it really came out like super well. That's what really drew me to it. I, I saw the article and then I clicked on the trailer and it was really, really well done. Um, so hey, what? this is something that a lot of my guys were wondering. What made you guys decide to go on the pay-what-you-want business model? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, like basically... You go for it, Sam. <laughs> um, there's a couple issues in that. Um, I, I think for me, it was a lot of. I was still a little worried that there are some things that could go wrong. I, I know that it's very difficult to have it in a place where you know that nothing could go wrong. But I wanted to make sure that people who people would still play it, and if something did go wrong, know that they it didn't cost them to have something go wrong with it in a way. Um, and then people who did enjoy it enough could still feel that they could give some money towards us for it. Yeah. Um, and Jimmy? Um, well, basically, just like when we're charging money, when, when we're charging a set price, there's like an expectation that it will actually work. And <laughs> like the first like 50 copies or so that were downloaded, um, there were problems like riddled throughout those. Like I, I think the sound wasn't working in a lot of them. Um, I think in your one, actually, it wasn't working as well. You mentioned, <laughs> yeah, the Mac build as well. We didn't have up. There were a few, there were quite a few problems we've had to fix these uh, past few days, but it's the builds are pretty stable right now. Hopefully, <laughs> oh, it, it it's very stable. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple sound issues here and there, but honestly, it it wasn't like bad. I mean, I've bought games on Steam that have had similar issues. <laughs> I, I have a friend who can't even play Undertale, and I I. He, I uh, bought for him. So like oh, really? that. Yeah. What was wrong? What was wrong with it? Uh the sound wasn't working at all <laughs> in his copy. So uh, sounds the best bit. <laughs> yeah. So like, oh, it's, oh, that actually brings me to my question. Have you guys played any games recently? Like on like I don't know if you guys play console or PC more or uh personally I've I've gotten back into Overwatch again. I played it a lot when it came out and I, I dipped away from it uh while at uni. Uh but now that I've come out again, I've really gotten back into it. That game is awesome. Who do you like maining as? I play. I played a lot of Mercy when it came out, and now that I've come back to it, I I do really still like Mercy, but Anna in is maybe my favorite. Anna's great. I really am a Pharah person just because I love <laughs> shooting rockets. Oh, I'm a Pharah. I'm a Pharah as well. <laughs> yeah, just so much fun. Like you're just flying around the map the whole time shooting rockets. <laughs> um, Jimmy, you mentioned Fire Emblem. Have you been playing any other games recently, or do you like? Um, is it, I guess your main go-to. Uh, I've been sinking like uh, like 85 hours into Persona 5 recently. It's a good game. Which really good game. It's a really good game, yeah. It, it goes on a tad too long, maybe, but <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing saying, through. Yeah, when you're saying 85 hours and you're talking about a linear story RPG and you're saying you're not even done, yeah, it's, it's too long. <laughs> I, I, I had to drop off around 40 hours myself just because... I couldn't, I was, I'm back in school learning programming. I didn't have time to try to do Persona and create, create stuff. It's, it's crazy. Like, you know, when you're programming, it takes so much work and so much time, which it, are you guys out of school then for good? Or are you guys going back in the fall? Um, um, when we, we're, go we're going back in like uh, a month to work on like a third year game now. So we've got like some of the Wild Heart team with us in the third year. And we've sort of planned out what game that's going to be. And we're just going to, this year, third year, we're going to spend a whole year working on this game. Oh, that's so awesome. Ho hopefully that might lead somewhere, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's, you've, <laughs> I don't know. You've got a lot of stuff going on. But Sam, you were about to interject. Are you going back to school as well with Jimmy? Or you, did you? Uh, think... Yeah, we'll, we'll be in the same team for um yeah. for next year with a couple other people. A couple, like, the teams moved around a lot uh, between the years. So it's like half of our team, half of um another team that was working on another game from our course. 
Well, I'm sure a lot of the teams were impressed with what you guys made. So I'm pretty sure you probably got a couple of people who are like, yeah, let's do something together next semester. <laughs> I highly doubt all of them came out as polished as yours guys, your guys' game did. So I bet they would rather. <laughs> what? A lot of them were really good. Um, like it's really nice to see what how like how much people can create within that time. Like um, yeah, I don't know if actually they are up on a site. But I think Falmouth is working to put a lot of the ones made this year and by the third years of the previous year um, together on a site somewhere. And I will I will try and find that quickly. Oh, yeah. If you guys can find that, please like shoot us the link and I'll I mean, I'm still new to all this stuff, but I'm posting on all the social media <laughs> things that we have, um, which, you know, I mean, this is kind of something to do at the end. But I want to ask you guys now because I, I never got a response. Do you guys have a social media site or anything? Because I mean, I'm sure. With the amount of like recent interest in your games, like you probably have a lot of people follow you. We've got um we've got like a Facebook page, but um we haven't no. don't actually we, we, don't, have, we don't have a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> a Facebook page, no one uses that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you guys should think about doing like an Instagram or Twitter or something, because mm. I think we have a Facebook page too, but I I just link all the other ones to it and drop them to the Facebook. <laughs> Never looked at it, so yeah. The the issue with it is because because we're moving into a new team next year, we're we're probably going to be dropping the Wild Heart, like no, the Two Ravens page and stuff. So oh. we weren't really, really sure what to do, whether we should like branch out with it or just keep it to that Facebook page and then move on with it next year. Oh man, too bad. I think Two Ravens is a great like development studio name, and I, you know, I don't know. It's it's always great to have an umbrella term to cover all of your stuff. Just in case yeah. you look for it. It's kind of sad that like this didn't come up next year when we were actually leaving uni because we've had like some like offers and things, but like it's it's just not really the right time to do it unless we actually want to like leave uni and pursue it. But that's pretty risky. <laughs> that is a huge risk, and it, it might work out. I am still a big fan of like, hey, you know, I dropped out of school and went back after I did music for a long time, and I'm glad I got a degree. I don't really use it, yeah. but I'm glad I actually stuck <laughs> through it and like got the degree. So, what are your guys' plans for Wild Heart? I know you. It was a uni project. Do you guys have any more plans though? Are you gonna patch it? Are you guys gonna release it on Steam? Put it on any consoles? Hopefully, Nintendo Switch, which I love. <laughs> Um, we're, we're talking about maybe putting it on Steam, but um, we're not really sure if that's the right thing to do since we've been giving it away for free up until now. And if we put it on Steam for like a 99p or whatever, we'll have to also make the Itchio one 99p. So we're not really mm -hmm. sure if that's fair for people that have bought it already. Have you heard so, of a game called Cave Story? <laughs> <laughs> did, did that happen with Cave Story? <laughs> Cave Story was a freemiumware game that I just spent $30 for on my Nintendo Switch. But if I really, really wanted to play it for free, I could find it like on the internet for free still. Did they really re release it for free to begin yeah. with? That was in huh. 2004. It was a free game. And then I want to say they first started charging for it with a Nintendo Wii version. I want to yeah, say it was early. Early. Yeah. So it's, I mean, like you guys could do it. You don't have to, but I just think. I mean, maybe it's not even that important anymore, but with the deluge of games coming out on Steam, I don't think anyone's gonna <laughs> gonna turn a blind, like turn an eye to it. I, have you guys been following that at all? Like the Steam stuff? Like twenty seven hundred games released last month after Steam Direct? <laughs> um Is you go go for it. <laughs> uh I I've been following it like slightly and just listening to like YouTubers talk about it and things. And um I mean it just releasing anything on Steam right now just seems just like you're you're just gonna get lost into like the just the bin of steam basically if you release anything because i i think i read that like your game will stay on the new re newly released thing for about like a day or two before it's just kicked off or an hour probably oh, an hour, yeah <laughs> probably even less so i don't know i don't think even if we put wild heart now i don't think it would take off like it has on itch what do you guys think of itch this is actually my first use of it i've never even i've heard of it but i've never used itch before I mean, it's got more freedom than Steam because you can like just upload. You can just upload it without paying the hundred pound fee to get it on there, and you can sh pretty easily change builds and things. Like we've we've gone through about five or six already, and uh, pretty patching quickly. things. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's like a service aimed at developers, really. So for us, it's pretty decent. <laughs> Did you guys have any prior use to it? Like Sam, have you ever bought anything or or played anything on Itch before? um this game 
<laughs> no, uh, like uh, joining the course um, a year or two ago was the first kind of like introduction to this like really small stuff. And I've definitely I've had a look and I've played some games from itch before, but I've never like this is the first kind of like real involvement I've had with it. Yeah, I, I also noticed like what you mentioned, Jimmy, about you being able to update really quick. I feel like I read a comment where someone was saying the Mac version wasn't working and I would thought I was going to have to run boot camp to play the game. And I played it like that day, the same day. Have you guys just been nonstop patching this game? Like, because I saw a Mac 1.0 up there, and people were saying the Mac one wasn't there, or didn't work, or whatever. Um, what like drew us into making the Mac version is that someone paid uh, paid for a copy, and then they they emailed me saying, um, "I thought it was Mac. Like, do you not have a Mac version?" So then, like that day, I think Sam went into the union, <laughs> made made the Mac version, and then we got it up at that night. Oh, that's awesome. Sam, was that a lot of work? Do you have to, or was it just like a different exporting process or, or how does that work? Um, luckily uni, uh, sorry, unity has, is really good with porting to different platforms, but then um, there are some, there were some issues that we ran into that I wasn't expecting. Like, um, I've never actually used a Mac before until the other day. Oh, wow. And I didn't realize that, um, they don't have a natural right click. Like yeah. anywhere you press on the mouse is a uh, left click. So I had to rebind a lot of the um, the controls to make it more smooth for Mac users. Well, uh, like actually, dialogue and stuff. yeah, a lot of modern because I'm talking to you guys on an iMac right now. A lot <laughs> of modern. <laughs> sorry, guys, I'm that one user. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of Macs nowadays, you can just set the right side of your mouse. But yeah, you're right. They don't have like a differentiated uh, mouse click unless you buy a PC enabled mouse. Um, which, you know, I don't think a lot of people are, are going to go out of their way to buy another mouse instead <laughs> of just use the one that comes with it. Um, so, hey, it's easy to export. It brings me back to question again. Why not Nintendo Switch? I'm sure you guys can sell a ton of copies. Just put it on there. I got one. I'll take it with me on the go. Play it. I mean, I would love to, but <laughs> I mean, we don't really know how to get it to like PlayStation or Xbox or anything, really. We just know PC. <laughs> but doesn't Unity have an exporting process for PlayStation and Xbox, though? Or it has for consoles, um, but I'm not sure. Like, like with the Mac one, there are a couple of unexpected issues that comes up along with uh, binding of controls. I think we would have to, um, like, we'd have to keep in mind when we were building it first that someone would be able to use a controller and stuff like that. So I'm not sure. It it would be really cool, but I think yeah. because of our just like lack of experience at this point. I don't yeah. think that's going to be achieved. I know. I understand. <laughs> because you have another project coming up in what, September? So you have one more month yeah. of relax. <laughs> um, okay. This actually is the big one. The big question that I think, you know, I've been dancing around this whole time. How did this Kotaku article affect any of this stuff? And how long did it take between you guys putting this game up on itch and Kotaku finding out about it? Did you guys contact them? I can get the analytics stuff up actually. And, uh, a quick look um it was only um it was only really a couple of days after we had posted it up on itch i think yeah did they, did they find you did you guys have someone who contacted them like um i think i was just looking for wild heart on google and then i just saw the kataku article yeah i think they found us I th that is amazing <laughs> it, it probably has like a lot of games that are released weekly too right yeah it's been pretty amazing because it's been hanging around at like the eighth spot on like the popularity and stuff. It's actually sinking away right now, but <laughs> for that's, a while it was. <laughs> I mean, it's still even like for several weeks or whatever. That's I mean, nowadays that's a super impressive feat to have a game that's even in the top t even in the top a hundred popularity. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been crazy. I honestly don't know <laughs> how it's yeah. managed together. Who do you remember if it was Heather or who who found you guys? Uh, I mean, yes. no, no one actually got in contact with us about it. <laughs> they just did an article on it, and then we just found the article, and that was it. <laughs> you guys should contact them. I'm sure they'd love to talk with you guys. Like, I mean, that's really, you know, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm like being, you know, naive, but I, I think that's really, really cool that they did that, and I think they'd love to hear from you because that's uh, them just choosing a game at random is, you know, they're one of the top. I want to say they're the fourth top red or third top red news like video game news site maybe even number one now mm -hmm. so it's, it's definitely something like we should consider yeah <laughs> did, was nice everybody, 
team like super stoked about it like just like jumping like super excited the second that you guys like send an email out or whatever you did to announce it I, we've got like a facebook chat with like the team and it. it's just like it was just going nuts when we said about that <laughs> just like constantly buzzing yeah did it go from like zero to a hundred then in sales like probably almost immediately because that you know like i said i was drawn from that article so um i think that day our views like i've got it here that day but the day before we had like 260 views and then the day after we had 1500 oh so wow it, it really did boost it yeah it's just such a such a cool thing i think a lot of that has to do man with just your, the logo and the aesthetic like I, everybody's fan of red wall man everyone knows it everyone loves it um but no that the animal like fighting thing it's it's great it's it's not super extra violent and it's got a really peaceful feel to it um i think there's a lot of really cool things about it and you guys made a really really good choice yeah thanks <laughs> i mean um well we, we, we were joking a lot about during the making it that it was like we didn't want to go for the watership down approach <laughs> and go for the like the more jolly like disney-ish look yeah for sure there's enough games where it's just a guy shooting another guy or a guy with a sword doing you know and those games are great too but i just feel like they're a lot harder to be to stand out in a world where there's tons of those um do what uh you know i already asked if you guys have any plans after this but after you guys finish uni are you guys hopefully gonna you know stay in the games industry or or what's the what's the hope there what's the what's the plan if you can plan that far ahead for you sam we'll start with you <laughs> i think that's everyone's because a lot of us are there solely for like game development regardless of the aspect whether writing art, art uh, programming stuff um i think that's everyone's hope is to someday like continue into the industry when they leave um and find like either create a new company or join an existing one um there the uni at the moment does offer another program for our course once we finished that allows us to um start a team and try to work in a group to create another product after we've finished it's more of a it's more of the business side of things. It's a, like a master's business degree, uh, like a business master's. Um, and I think that's something to shoot for. Yeah. At least for most of us. Um, and then if not, just try and hope to create something for ourselves. How about I, you, I think, you I think um, yeah, like that, that scheme is really good. But, and I think there's also maybe the possibility of like, if we can get like a bunch of really devoted people, maybe try and starting in a studio ourselves, but there's like a lot to consider there. And I don't know the business side of it at all. So it would take a ton of research and things to like even consider that, but that may be a possibility. <laughs> Use that wild heart money, man. <laughs> Hopefully it was not a whole bunch of people just downloading a game for free. That is always the risk with the pay what you want model. And I'm sure a lot of people did not pay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's nice it's been really nice to get it out there and have people that just experience what we were able to make like it's really nice to just have people look at, look at what you made yo yeah it's excellent man and, and what you guys did is really special um it's it's you know it's i i i'm a big fan of that i run a rock band and my group's name is pack wild animals so i'm a big animal <laughs> fan like it's uh I, I just loved everything about it and um it's it was so cool and i it is a great experience to share that with other people um and I, i'm glad that you guys were able to like make such a huge impact because this has been such a really really cool endeavor that you guys have done which you know i, I want to ask like for anybody i'm not sure how many people but anybody who's listening who would like to get into the games industry what what advice would you give people like that? Because I mean, I know you guys aren't totally in the industry yourselves yet, but you kind of are on a very good upward trajectory. You're on like the best uni student trajectory I could imagine. I think I think so doing something like this is I'm not sure whether it's the best way, but I think it's a really good way to learn the basics. If you haven't touched, like a lot of us hadn't touched the engine before. And the course at the beginning went through us, went through with us, Unity. And now I think with the new students, they're also, if you want to, you can branch into Unreal. So you're uh -huh. not just limited to um, doing Unity stuff. And as well, they've got another course that just does, does just programming that they're trying to mix in with um, those groups in case they're running along programmers. Um, this is a really good way to have the time and resources to try and create something and get that out there and then 
with that kind of um, exposure, I guess, you you have that momentum and then the skills that you've learned through the process of making these games. And do, you, do you know if they have this university anywhere else, or is it just a, a, U, a Southern UK university? Or it's, it's like it's like an actual arts university um, in in England, and um, like I think the games course has only started two years ago, but like already they've like expanded it into a full-on games academy at Falmouth University now. So there's multiple courses now going for it, and then they all sort of like cross over together, and you all can help one another out. Oh, that's excellent. So I know, Sam, you're the lead programmer. Do you program primarily in Java, C Sharp, C++? What language do you like? Uh, C Sharp. I haven't really had any experience in other languages. I've been trying to, um, as I've come out of uni this year, I've been trying to look at some other language just to get a more basic knowledge of like other, if I were to work in other engines and stuff. Well, but... I mean, honestly, man, if you can learn one, it's just the syntax. Um, <laughs> totally get the others. I've I've been learning several myself, and they're very, very similar <laughs> in the end. Uh, Jimmy, what did you get a... This is something I really didn't get to ask you. You, you were the lead designer. What did you get to do on the game, exactly, if you don't mind me asking? Exactly. I designed, like, the, like, uh, combat and the animal uh, abilities, statistics, like, balancing all of that sort of thing. Um, Wild Heart initially, like was a like a board game like we had like we made a paper prototype and we basically like just kept testing it among the team like going over uh like all picking our little animals and just moving them around the hexes on the grid and stuff and just trying it like that um and it's just sort of grew from there and then we added in the abilities and stuff in the main game do you guys still have that board game uh, it's, it's actually in my pencil case, yeah. <laughs> Send me a picture of that, man. That would be really, really cool. That sounds awesome. Or if you have it on your Facebook, I'd love to see it. it it's just like a bunch of hexes, basically. It's just hexes with like fox and row written on it. And then you just move them around on just, it's just a blank hex grid. It's, it's not that exciting. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Yeah, it's better. It's from the guy saying that his game's not that exciting when it is really, really cool um so anything else uh that's i mean you guys answered pretty much most of my questions but i want to ask is there anything else you guys want to add before you go anything that you're i mean like we mentioned you're now working on your stuff till next semester but is there anything that you guys have been like in love with in the past like a favorite game that you you'd want to talk about or something i i know that you mentioned fire emblem but i didn't know if you guys had something that really like drew you into gaming to begin with i mean i I don't have I don't have any, anything in particular to say, but like for like the game that drew me into gaming, uh, that would be like probably, I mean, my, the first games console I got, which was more recent than I think now, is the PlayStation Two, and I had Time Splits Two for that. <laughs> if you know that, <laughs> which is a great game. Yes. Yeah. Um, I played I played in my, the N sixty four with my friends back at, when I was really young, playing Smash and stuff like that. That is one of our favorite consoles. If you ever get a chance to check out Super PS, you will hear us talk about <laughs> Nintendo 64 a it, lot. Uh, it destroys friendships, that console. <laughs> it's great. It had, I think, uh, <laughs> I had 200 games total on the console, and it was, <laughs> there were a lot of bad games. But uh, <laughs> Superman, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that uh, Superman 64 yeah, game. Super 64. <laughs> <laughs> the worst games I've made. Sam, what about you? What's, uh, if, if you have anything you want to add, great, but what's a game that, that got you into gaming. I'm not sure if I have much else to uh, like add properly to it, but um, to get into gaming, um, I had a PS1 a long time ago, and to this day, I still play a lot of the um, Spyro games. The first yeah. three That's great. Spyro games are very good. Um, and alongside those, I, uh, when I was a kid, I really liked the Croc games. Yep, <laughs> great. I've tried to go back to them recently, and they're not—they don't quite hold up as well. They're, they're not, not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, real quick about that. Now that uh, now that Crash Bandicoot sold really well on PS4, I think it was in like the top ten when it released. Yeah. Are you hoping for the uh, Spyro remaster? That would be the greatest thing. I I would be so happy if they were made the first I, three. I think we'll see it. I want to say Activision owns it, and with how good Crash did, I wouldn't be surprised. I you know I bet it's yeah. worth their investment. You, even Crash, like I really liked those games. Well, I haven't had a, check, a chance to check out the new um, the new trilogy, but 
Yeah, neither have I, which is very disappointing because I did like those games a lot as a kid too. There, to me, I was big Nintendo boy, so even though I had a PlayStation, I really loved like Super Mario sixty four and the Banjo Kazooies yeah. of the world. So yeah. I enjoyed Crash Bandicoot, but just its its linear progression made it less entertaining than like oh Super Mario sixty four. I'm gonna run around and catch a rabbit, and that rabbit's gonna give me a star, <laughs> as in real life. So it's kind of. <laughs> It's kind of a shame there aren't so many 3D platformers anymore because that's my favorite genre. Yeah, did you guys get a chance to check out ukulele? I've been meaning to, I but I haven't had time. Well, I first suggest you guys, when you get time and money, buy a Nintendo Switch and then wait <laughs> for that. <laughs> wait for ukulele on there. But um, yeah, I ukulele I played in. It's good. It, you know, it reminds you of like, hey, these were better when I was younger. And they're yeah. maybe not, they don't hold up as well as I yeah. wish they did. <laughs> I've heard, like, I haven't checked it out myself, but I've heard a couple of people have, uh, like, one or two issues with it. Yeah. That are just based in that genre rather than, like, the problems with the game itself kind of thing. Yeah, I I, I know they released a game, a small, well, an indie game called Poi that uh, came out earlier this year on Steam, and now it's on Xbox and PlayStation, and they got a game called Hat in Time. I don't know if you've... All that. So they have a lot of these 3D platformer resurgence games coming out this year. And with Super Mario Odyssey, which will probably be great, that will come out too. But yeah, I, I, a lot of that stuff just doesn't... I mean, we've changed so much. Every game's an RPG now. Like you were mentioning when you guys were trying to figure out your leveling system, like I had to ask because, you know, 10 years ago, that wouldn't even be a question. But now yeah. every game is an RPG. So it's weird to have games where you don't like level up and do all this stuff. So the platformers are, are you know, hey, where's my stats and why when I hit these guys, am I not gaining 30 experience points? <laughs> you know, ukulele or whatever mm -hmm. so yeah no it's it, it was it's been a pleasure talking to you guys do you guys have like a, a twitter or something that they can follow you guys on i know, I know you mentioned a facebook uh, <laughs> we do have oh, twitter uh do we? At two ravens gaming on twitter <laughs> two ravens gaming you said yeah okay cool i'm gonna at least i can friend you guys or whatever and <laughs> twitter follow you now because i was looking for you but uh, I typed in two ravens and it was just a bunch of cooks or like some guy who cooked and I don't know what the other guy did. <laughs> I wasn't aware of, I wasn't aware we had a Twitter. Uh, um, now we've got know. a Facebook though. We've definitely got Facebook. <laughs> Is it two ravens also gaming yeah. or just two ravens? Uh, just, just two just ravens. Two ravens. Facebook. Okay. Hey, well, hopefully you guys plan on coming out to the United States anytime soon. <laughs> Unfortunately not, I don't think. No, Come on! We'll see. <laughs> Well, you guys will be out here for E3 soon enough. So when you do, you're going to have to come by and visit. Um, we're all down in that area, like south of LA. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been this has been awesome, man. I, I'm really yeah. stoked that you guys decided yeah, to. Thanks a lot. Thank, oh, yeah, thank, is... you so, thank you so much for having us on. What are you guys talking about? Thank yeah. you guys. Like This is just a ton of fun. It's something me and my buddies like love doing, and we've been talking about it for a while. Like, hey, we love games, but don't make any games. And we really want to get into like, hey, what goes into making game and like how much time? And uh, and you guys were super cool and awesome. And you're going to have to come down here though and check out Glitch City. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard of the game Hyperlight Drifter. Oh, Is yeah. That... Yeah. Yeah, so there's a, a big uh, complex in North Hollywood area where they rent it out just to like game developers. Or I don't know if, you have, if it's rented out or invite only or whatever, but the guy who made Hyperlight Drifter worked on his game there. And it's just like a big warehouse where a whole bunch of... Uh, developers work out of and they make oh, that's awesome yeah so there's there's a lot of you guys got to come down here <laughs> but, uh yeah you guys are friends with us nate over here at super bs down uh south orange county and uh yeah man um i it's been awesome if uh we really 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 want to thank you guys for coming on um anything if you guys have anything else to add i don't want to stop you before <laughs> we close out favorite song recently from justin bieber go everybody loves the Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Every favorite Justin Bieber song. Okay, I gotta limit it to ten, guys. We don't have that much time. <laughs> well, uh, Jimmy, Sam, I really appreciate having you guys on. Thanks again. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. I'm excited to hear what people say. A lot of people, when I posted this, were like, "Hey, this sounds really cool." So, I right, man, I will uh, talk to you soon, and I'll uh, let you know when it goes up. Peace. Thank you. Thank See you ya. guys. See ya. Bye. So that was my chat with Sam and Jimmy from Two Ravens about their wonderful indie game. Wild Heart, which you can find on itch.io. It's pay what you want, so give it a shot. Uh, you can find it for PC or Mac, again, on itch.io. Wild Heart. If you enjoyed that, please shoot us an email. We're at superbscast at gmail.com. We're hoping to hear from you. You can find us wherever fine podcasts are sold, on iTunes or on podcast.com. 
We really want to do more of this stuff in the future, so hopefully you'll be hearing from us pretty soon. Peace. Oh, yeah. That uh, to us people that can feel things, it it uh, it hurts.